from uh, Kicking It With Kesey says, man, I busted out laughing out loud at work. Rabbit on steroids. <laughs> oh, yeah. Me and the old lady used to get it in. Uh, from J. Clyde Simpson, I really hope Doug's wife and kids don't listen to the show. I know the wife don't really listen. And the kids should be in class right now. My oldest daughter, she should be at work right now. Middle daughter should be in class right now. Baby girl is definitely in class. She's in the seventh grade, so I think we good. <laughs> Casey says, Doug's mother-in-law going to slip some pork in Doug's next meal. Don't say that, folks. <laughs> Please don't say that. Uh, from that ninja, your wife is going to kick your ass, Doug. I ain't lying. <laughs> the quote, the great David Allen Greer and Kim Wayans in The Living Color, we still together. <laughs> yeah. She'll be just fine. She'll be all right. She'll be all right. Uh, from that Ninja Top 5, that shot track doesn't even make honorable mention. Damn. Well, you know what? I mean, to do a top five list on the top side riding songs of all times, man, would take a lot of thought. Give me your top five, Ninja. Give me your top five. Maybe you'll give me some inspiration to uh, come up with my list. But for me, for me personally, I had that song recorded on a cassette tape over and over and over and over and over again. And before we commence to the side riding, it was damn near like a tradition. It was like a tradition. It was like a ritual. Before we commence the side riding, I'd hit play on that cassette on my little tape recorder or whatever I had back at the time. Yes, sir. Uh, let the side riding commence with shy. Ramondre Elam, downtown by the Great South uh, SWV. Ah, uh, downtown by SWV. I got to hear it. I got to remember it. I remember the title. From, um, who do we have here? From uh, Al where Mickey Free Thompson, because that's what you do, Doug. I don't know what he's talking about. From J.B. Jennings, just so Dalvin will put that offense over the top. Uh, from Andre Elam, Wisconsin running backs don't do well, but they hang around the league for a while. Eh, Monty Ball didn't hang around too long. Uh, Ron Dane hang around, hung around for a couple of years. Who did Ron Dane pay for anyway in the NFL? I don't even remember. Who did Ron Dane, old punk ass Ron Dane, stole the Heisman Trophy from Joe Hamilton? Still mad about that. Um, from K, uh, kicking it with Kesey, X Squad. He says T Dub and Kayla, damn, he messed that up. Um, what did I say? T Dub and Kayla. Damn, he messed that up. I don't know what he's talking about. From LD. Oh, I lost the message just now from LD. Uh, oh, no, I got it back. He says, uh, Wisconsin running backs don't do well because they don't have them big corn-fed colonizers to block for them anymore once they leave the University of Wisconsin. Yeah, uh, Wisconsin offensive lines are known for their run blocking. They always have, once again, big corn-fed colonizers blocking for them. We're on Dane, and that's, that's, that's why – not only is Joe Hamilton um, my homeboy, and uh, he played at Georgia Tech, and we know each other very well, play golf all the time, you know, our people from the next town over from my hometown. Joe deserved that Heisman that year. And, and, I, and I looked at Ron Dane, and I watched what he did, and he was just a big back. Like, Ron Dane, you know, it's kind of like how I feel about Emmitt Smith. Once again, no disrespect to Emmitt Smith before I even say this, all right? I got to make sure and, and throw that disclaimer out there. But the the same argument I got for Emmett Smith, not that they aren't good, very good, even great running backs, but the holes that Ron Dane ran through his senior year, like I never saw him make no real elusive Barry Sanders like cuts or whatever. He was too big to do that. This man threw ho- ran through holes big enough to drive a truck through, okay? And they gave that man that damn Heisman Trophy, you know? And it was BS. And then uh, same thing with Emmett, man. As I said yesterday in talking about Emmett Smith and this whole, you know, which one of the best four running backs, which one would you take away in the little question I asked yesterday. Is same thing with Emmett. Not saying Emmett wasn't a great back, man, but I really do believe if you put Barry Sanders or Bo Jackson 
who was the other back that we talked about yesterday? Or Walter Payton. Walter Payton probably to the to the to the back of this conversation. But if you put Bo Jackson and Barry Sanders on that Dallas Cowboy team in the mid nineties, I'm very sure that they each would have rushed for over three thousand yards. I really believe that, man. I really believe that. Um, from Andre Elam, that ninja, one of my favorite backs was Ricky Waters. Ricky Waters was a bad boy, too. Very good back. One of them cats that could do it all. I mean, catch passes, block, did it all. Ricky Waters was a very good back. Uh, from LD, habitual line stepper from the D. The holes that Ron Dame ran through. Uh, holes, man. H-O-L-E-S. <laughs> Not holes. <laughs> oh, boy. For KC, speaking of side ride, did Doug say the holes Ron Dane ran through? No. Holes. H-O-L-E-S. Uh, it's my Geechee accent, I guess. Uh, from Al the Band, he says, Ron Dane always looked dusty, always needed lotion <laughs> and lip balm. <laughs> wow. Speaking of Chappelle show like the great Ashy Larry, huh? From Sandman, did y'all see that cop in Ohio stop that boy in the head while he was already on the ground in handcuffs? No, I haven't seen that, man. From Clay, MC Gusto Davis, Shalimar got a new bitch in group, and she finds in a and Mickey Ficky Charlie. Uh, oh, 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 when he was talking about Mickey Free. That's right. Great quote from the great Charlie uh, Murphy. <laughs> Oh, man. What was that during the, uh, right, the Prince skit on Chappelle's show? Charlie Murphy was describing, you know, the scene in the times. And, right, during that era, uh, androgyny was big. And all of the damn cast from Shalimar and everybody associated with Prince looked like freaking chicks. (laughs) And he was talking about the great Mickey Free. Um, rolled up in the club, classic stuff, man, which he is not lying. You go back and look at that era, man. <laughs> We've talked about this before. You go back and look at that era, man, uh, with all of those cats, anybody affiliated with Prince, like you damn near couldn't tell Prince and Shalimar and, and, uh, Jesse Johnson. You couldn't tell them between Sheila E and Apollonia and them. Cause androgyny. <laughs> Androgyny was big in Minnesota, I guess. From LD, he says, Rick James said, Charlie, nah, that cat was funny before his encounters with Rick. Let Eddie tell it. From Thel Pay, when he kicked Rick James and Dave Chappelle went flying into that hotel room mirror, I damn near died. <laughs> right. Go back and look. I looked at the video this morning. Go back and look at the, uh, the Rick James skit. The, at the very first time when he slapped Charlie Murphy, that, that skit. Uh, when, when Rick James asked him, you know, Charlie Murphy, what did the five fingers say to the face? And when he slapped him, look at the expression on Charlie Murphy's face. That might have been one of his best scenes, one of his best jobs of acting. Like, the look on his face was like, this wasn't a skit, this wasn't a TV show, this wasn't Chappelle's show. Like, he really slapped him. Like, Charlie Murphy had that look on his face like an average everyday ninja would have if he ever got slapped by the, the king of funk and R&B soul. Right. Like, he had this look on his face like, this motherfucker can't slap me in my face. From uh, that ninja, Andre, Roger Craig running with those high knees, one of the earliest memories of football, the high stepper. That's right, Roger Craig. From Coach Bill. Um, it says, just tuning in to Doug talk about the Tar Heel scandal or something that happened with that. Um, I know they were talking about it yesterday on the Puppet Factory on how there was about to be word to come down from the NCAA um, uh, on the cheating scandal that they had at the University of North Carolina. Let me see. Is there any breaking news on it? You know, listen to the Doug Stewart show. Uh, no breaking news on it yet. Something must have just happened. We'll keep our eyes on the ticker. Uh, but I haven't seen anything on that on that yet. 
404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Uh Coach Bill, uh, tell me what happened. Uh, talk about it in the chat room. We ain't too too grown not to listen to uh, or get some some reporting from the Stewies in the chat room on Spreaker.com. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Show.com. When we get back from the break, man, it is hour number three. We call it the power hour. Yeah. When we get back from the break, we want to get into this little uh, football story, man. John Madden gives reaction to the Raiders moving to L. Or to Las Vegas. I'm about to say L.A. So John Madden gives uh, his thoughts about the Raiders moving to Vegas. We'll get into that. We'll read more of your chat. Once again, this is the Power Hour. Still talking about 1993. Um, a lot of fun stuff. Y'all know how we do it. The Doug Stewart Show. Chevy. She amazing. 